Chapter 81 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Madeline playfully hit Diane, but this sounds interesting, what is celestial will for it to have that effect? Well, Diane released his celestial will, causing his skin to glow slightly. Infinitesimally small crystals began to fall around him and Madeline, you can feel the purity, right? Celestial will is like the ultimate form of gentleness, but it is at the same time an absolute defense when its power is at a high enough level. Imagine washing away your opponent's attack by purifying it. At the same time, celestial will allows you to impose your will on others because its purity is so alluring, which helps when you want someone to feel as good as you do. Which is even easier considering the calming and good feeling the will gives you in general. The final and probably most important, is that it makes opening more than 72 meridians possible. Madeline looked up at Diane in shock, really. Mm. As you know, there are a total of 108 meridians. But, since ancient times, due to the loss in density of the energy of heaven and earth, more and more martial artists have begun to rely on cultivation stones to improve in later stages. Common stones for foundation stage, profound stones for essence gathering stage, and so on. The problem with that approach is that the energy lacks purity. So, even the best of geniuses can at most open 81 meridians. In fact, many essence gathering experts have only opened 54 meridians to reach the minimum requirement for essence gathering, before using treasures to force their cultivation upwards. Madeline nodded, knowing much of this already, oblivious to the fact that Diane had glossed over the loss in density of energy. Even Diane didn't know the full explanation, he had a pretty good guess. Dot amongst the geography books in the Central Pillar Library, he found that the size of Earth was many times smaller in the past. But, for some reason, it had expanded by millions of times. Allowing the human and martial world to stay perfectly isolated from each other. This obviously had the added affect of thinning the energy. The problem with that, is that your future cultivation is restricted. For every nine meridians you open, you gain access to one level of essence gathering. So, today, most martial artists can't access the 10th, 11th and 12th levels of the essence gathering stage which correspond to 90, 99 and 108 meridians being opened respectively. Usually, if you open 54 you'll be capped at the 7th essence gathering stage. If you open 63 you'll be able to push past with treasures and reach the 8th saint stage. If you open 72, you'll be able to reach the 9th celestial stage and so on. So, the amount of foundation you have at the meridian formation stage is directly correlated to your future potential. Of course, these are just absolute caps. Usually, martial artists wouldn't even reach those levels. The only way to bypass the impurity of cultivation stones is by purifying it. And the only way to do so is through celestial will. Although there are rare treasures in the world that may allow geniuses to reach the 10th and 11th stages of the coming realms, from what I understand, only celestial will evolve to a high enough state will be able to purify the cultivation stone energy enough to allow you to reach that ultimate level. This is because other wills that have the ability to purify simply don't have the quality that celestial will does. Wow, breathed Madeline, you'll be pretty amazing in the future then, won't you? Madeline didn't even notice the slight pride in her eyes when she spoke these words. I think you mean we, Diane said with a smile, I'm only able to sense and understand celestial will because my master gave me her essence blood before passing. But, now that I have sensed it, I can purify your energy for you when the time comes. In fact, I could leave a bit of celestial will within you so you not only have a little piece of me, but you could also make use of your constitution to comprehend it. I could help you, but the effect would be the best if you have celestial will of your own. With goddess disposition, your affinity towards purity is unmatched by many. I believe in you. Madeline pouted, and here I was hoping you could place it in me like you did before. Diane grinned, there is actually another even more efficient way for you to sense celestial will. Oh. And how's that? I could put a baby in you, Diane's grin grew wider. Although Diane was partially joking, 
the truth was that if Madeline had a baby in her that shared the blood of the celestial deer running through Diane's veins, it would indeed be more efficient. Plus, the exchange of primordial yin and yang would allow Madeline to benefit from the two bloodlines he had gained from his master and her husband. In addition, carrying such a baby for months would allow her to sense the fetus affinities quite acutely, making it even easier for her. Humph, Madeline said being playfully angry, don't try your tricks on me. I've yet to see a wedding ring. Diane smiled mysteriously, then how could I not oblige with my woman's will? I warn you though, the more practice you give me using this technique, the easier it'll be for me to seduce other girls in the future. Madeline was about to respond, but Diane's rough lips were already on hers as he slowly pulled down the sweats she was wearing. M. Madeline moaned, letting the pleasure wash away all the pain she had held in her heart. Chapter 82 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Madeline and Diane sat atop a massive celestial deer formation that galloped along the ocean water, leaving behind slight ripples. So why do you think I've been stuck at the seventh level of musical will? Madeline asked curiously. She had left behind the sweatpants and t-shirt much to Diane's dismay, instead opting for her usual casual purple chin pow. Her hair was up, wearing the defensive hairpin Diane had given her, still oblivious to the fact it was a transcendent treasure. She had even forced Diane to wear his jeans and open blue dress shirt look. Diane looked at the girl who sat on his lap holding a lyre with an adorable focused expression on her face, feeling his heart in his throat for what seemed like the millionth time. You really are too beautiful, Diane muttered. Madeline giggle. Focus, pervert. Right, right. If I'm going to be honest, the fact you've even reached that level considering the state your heart has been in over the years, is nothing short of a testament to your unbelievable talent, your sharp ear, and, quite frankly, a miracle. Madeline looked at Diane's side profile as he stared out into the ocean. The will of music isn't about just completely understanding the instrument in your hands and playing the right notes. It's about resonating with the environment you're playing in. It's about encroaching on the emotions of the people and things listening to you. And, maybe most important, it's about having a tranquil heart or an understanding of whatever turmoil that heart is in. Without the best understanding of yourself, it's hard to reach the purest form of the will of music. It's possible to jump over these hurdles at this stage, and you would definitely reach the peak level of musical will purely off of your talent. But, the barrier to musical intent would be exponentially harder. Madeline nodded, looking down at the lyre in her hands. Closing her eyes, she listened to the gentle taps the celestial deer left in the water. She listened to Diane's gentle heartbeat and felt the heat coming from his body. All of a sudden, she seemed to understand something. Her hair fluttered gently in its bun and her breathing quietened to almost resonate with the world around her. Diane looked on at this scene with a smile. He was afraid she wouldn't notice his phrasing, but it seemed like he worried too much. How could a genius like Madeline not realize that understanding your environment and the things listening to you meant that you're not only playing for yourself and the things that live, but, when lilies sway in appreciation and blossoms twirl in the wind, and the air shimmers with life, can they not also listen to you play? Madeline's hand raised to her lyre strings. With a wave of his hand, without Madeline noticing, Diane removed the concealment formation on the spiritual lyre. A beautiful melody began to ring out. The steps of the celestial deer began to not only leave ripples, but also a pulsing light with its each step. Diane felt his understanding of the world increase under Madeline's efforts. This must be why Delia enjoys training with Madeline so much. To be able to induce the best in others, my Madeline is truly a pure soul. After hours, Madeline finally stopped playing, beads of sweat falling down her brow. But, despite her fatigue, she had an excited look on her face. I did it. Madeline kissed Diane on the cheek, it's all thanks to you. She had a smile that outshone the sun that hung high in the sky. Diane shook his head, pulling her in close, the only thing that was stopping you from reaching this step was the pain in your heart and the burdens you carried. With your level of comprehension, 
how could you not reach this step without me? Madeline smiled, but didn't respond. Dot Diane glanced at the liar, look, I think it wants to acknowledge you as its master. Madeline was stunned. She was well aware that only master level and above treasures had their own wills and could thus acknowledge masters. Wasn't this liar just at the peak of practitioner level? The liar glowed in Madeline's hands, vibrating gently. Madeline pouted, you've been tricking me. Diane laughed, I couldn't be certain that you'd have a way back to the Sapientia main branch, so I wanted to conceal it for a bit until I was strong enough to make sure you wouldn't come to any harm. But, when I came to stop that farce, I noticed a faint killing intent when Elder Kami mentioned signing a marriage contract in blood. That level of aura couldn't come from a simple old lady, especially to the extent of nearly hiding it from an innate aurora, so, I made some guesses. I'm still surprised that even when I called out to her, I couldn't see through her disguise until she removed it, Madeline nodded. You probably didn't notice, but because of your beauty, the hairpin has long since accepted you as its master. And now that you've proven your talent to the liar, it too has, Diane said with a gentle smile that hid nothing of the pride he felt in his woman. Madeline gently touched the hairpin, this is a master level treasure too. You treat me well, Madeline said with a grin. Of course, of course. But, how could I only give you a measly master level treasure? These are spiritual level treasures. Nothing but the best for you, I promise. Madeline's eyes widened, but she just shook her head in acceptance, he really does nothing by half measures. But, you should conceal them again, Diane. Even the Sapientia clan only has a few spiritual treasures. In fact, even when I was a genius to them to be married off at their leisure, I had never seen them. If I suddenly arrive with two, especially with how you revealed that you're the celestial dear sex successor, you'll definitely be hunted down even more fervently, Madeline said with a trace of worry. Diane sighed, I'll be a laughing stock for only being able to give my woman a half-dot-stepmaster level treasure, but, I'll listen to you. I'd prefer if you worried less. Madeline nodded in satisfaction as Diane waved his hands, leaning her head to Diane's neck and looking out to the slowly approaching land. Chapter 83 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Since you've shown me the entertainment of the human world, I can't let you look down on the martial world too much, now can I? Oh. Can you beat Lord of the Rings though? Madeline had a mysterious smile on her face. If we were powerful enough, I'd bring you to a volcano even more powerful than they described in it. Unfortunately, it's in the Demon Fire God Clan's territory and I've only been there once when my master brought me. We also have real dragons in the Chilin, Drago lands. And real elves in the Elven Forest. And no orcs. How could we lose? Diane smiled wryly, it is a bit hard to beat them I guess. Thinking of dragons and Chilins though, Diane brought out Little Black so he could enjoy the view. Oh, what size is your spatial ring? Diane asked Madeline. It's not too bad. It's about 27 meters cubed. Diane waved his hands, store your things in your hairpin instead. I forgot to tell you that it doubles as a storage device, L-O-O. Madeline clapped her hands in excitement. The storage of a spiritual level treasure was no joke. After putting away her liar, Little Black immediately jumped into her arms. So, what are these entertaining things you're going to take me to do? There are illusory formation games, fantastic restaurants, magic performances. You can even enter dream worlds to live out a few years in just a few moments. There are a lot of Sapientia family-run auctions. There are also a lot of tournaments to watch. All over the continent, there are chaos arenas run by the Cavacitos God Clan. They enjoy battles so much that they try to find the strongest warriors to pit against the younger generation in their main clan arena. It's a lot like those sports games you mentioned from the human world. Everyone has their favorites and fighters also have organizations that sponsor them, kind of like teams. If you work your way up, you can fight in higher level arenas. If you win three fights against their Cavacitos clan members, whether in a row, 
or after many losses, then you automatically have the choice of either joining their clan as a respected member, or a prize of equivalent value. But, probably the most entertaining thing is probably the ancient games. There is a total of three. No one knows the names of them and the rules have long since been forgotten. However, the formations and materials used to play those games from so many years ago still exist. Also, there's something very odd about these games. Once someone decides to embark on a journey of learning the rules through play, an ancient array formation appears as a mental block, disallowing you from discussing the rules you've figured out. Diane was intrigued, wait, so why are games no one knows how to play so entertaining? Madeline smiled, the thing is, even without knowing the rules, you can still play and can still watch people play. Although no one can talk about the rules, there are still a few basic rules that even a child could figure out. But, only true geniuses can delve into a more complex understanding and therefore win more consistently. But, even they often lose. How could you win every time if all the rules aren't known to you? In those arenas, the elves have dominated for a long time. I'm sure if you ever meet them, you'll figure out why. Or, maybe if you ever see the games, you could make some guesses. Unfortunately, the city we're coming to now doesn't have an ancient games arena. But. There are a lot of other things to do, Madeline said with a smile. Wow. Ancient games that even till now can force billions of people to be unable to speak of the rules, impressed. Madeline asked with a grin. Diane lightly pinched Madeline's nose. Don't get too cocky. I have more of the human world you haven't seen yet. Plus, isn't the thing that's most entertaining to you from the human world? Diane said with a wide grin. Madeline blushed, pervert. Look, we're almost at the gates, let's go. Diane and Madeline walked hand in hand under the night sky. Although the city itself was relatively small compared to others, as Madeline pointed out many times as she still argued the side of the martial world, it was quite ridiculously large and bustling. The roads were wide and diligently made with hexagonal tiles. Vendors filled the sides, often calling out to attract the attention of customers. Buildings as tall as Focus Academy's outer pillars were as frequent as the tiny, packed stores were. After spending the whole day here with Madeline, Diane was pleasantly surprised that no one bothered them, it's either this city is quite morally upstanding, or they know Madeline's identity and don't dare to offend her. Madeline skipped ahead a bit, pointing towards the tallest building at the center of the city, that's our last stop for today. It's the reason why this is called Wine City, and also the reason why this city is so active even though it's near the edge of the continent. Diane allowed himself to be pulled along as he ignored the jealous faces around him. It's called Heaven's Wine. They actually have the best wine within thousands of kilometers. An expert of the saint stage is actually said to be the founder, although no one has ever seen him or her. As for why they decided to come to such a weak place, I've heard that they just liked the ocean view, Madeline said with a smile as they reached the door. We'll only be able to enter the first of four levels because we don't have any cultivation currently. But, it's still good wine. I've been to the third level with my dad before too, it's quite good. Oh. Are the floors restricted based on cultivation? Yes, there are four sets of ten floors each to accommodate the people from around the continent. You can enter the first ten with no cultivation, but to enter the last level, you need to be essence gathering. Just as they were about to enter, a voice came from behind them. Chapter 84 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Oh, so it's Lady Madeline. It's been a long time since you've been here. Turning around, they found a well-dressed young man followed by another young man and a beautiful girl. Madeline smiled, causing the two young men to feel their hearts constrict. The beautiful girl's expression darkened, but she said nothing. So, it's the young master, it has indeed been a long time. We've known each other for so long Lady Madeline, there's no need to be so formal. You can call me Big Brother Iacus. I think about you often, but as you know, my master doesn't allow me to go out very often. 
I'm always either managing heaven's wine or cultivating. Pardon me, I've spoken too much. I'm actually here with a couple friends of mine to receive some esteemed guests. Since it's a special occasion, I wouldn't mind escorting you to the top floor. It's usually reserved for peak essence gathering experts, but I of course have a way around this. Since I helped them, how could I not help you? Diane who had been standing quietly beside Madeline raised an eyebrow but said nothing. He had long since gotten rid of his dress shirt and was dressed in a simple white t-shirt and blue jeans. This naturally caused the young people to completely ignore his existence. Although he doubted the dress shirt would have made much of a difference. That won't be necessary, Madeline said politely, I'm sure you have important matters to attend to. It's really no trouble at all. I'm sure none of them would object the company of such an esteemed lady. Madeline was going to respond when Diane's voice rang out. Don't mind her, of course we'll follow you up, Diane said with a smile. Madeline gave an odd glance towards Diane, but instead said nothing. Ayaka started, finally throwing a glance in Diane's direction. Who are you to interrupt our conversation? Haven't you understood that attendants should remain silent? I'm not entirely sure why Lady Madeline would use a man as a servant, or why he'd have such a lack of etiquette, but please learn your place next time. Madeline's face darkened, but Diane's face kept his composed smile. Huh, you misunderstand. I simply meant we don't need your help to reach the top floor. By follow you up I only meant that we'll be going to the same place anyway, Diane said in a carefree way, waving his hand. Ayaka's face changed to a look of sheer disdain but he didn't get a chance to respond as Snickers came from behind him. I never thought I'd meet someone so stupid. Do you have any idea what this place is? To think a kid with no cultivation like you would think of going to the top floor without help. Someone help me, I can't breathe, the boy following Ayakis couldn't help himself as he hunched over in laughter. Die inside, idiots, idiots everywhere. Well, two idiots, one refined young man, and two beautiful girls. Madeline looked over at Diane with a, really, look, but only got a grin in response. The girl, hearing what Diane said, replied with a harumph. The expression on the boy's face froze, and Iacus's look of disdain turned to anger. Who do you think you are? We are disciples just recently accepted to the Wind Blade sect and this is the young master of Heaven's Wine. Did you think I wouldn't attack you just because you're with Lady Sapientia? Iacus ignored the young man's outburst, you have three seconds to kowtow and apologize, or else I'll be forced to take action against you personally. Diane's grin widened, what? Is what I said wrong? How could you two be anything other than idiots? You stand here fawning over a beautiful woman while insulting her fiancé. Those are some interesting tactics you have there. Diane couldn't help but laugh. He really did find all of this to be very funny. Iacus froze. Even the girl who was pretending this had nothing to do with her looked up in interest. F. Fiance Iacus couldn't believe what he had just heard, he looked over to Madeline and his heart sunk as he saw that she had no intentions of refuting Diane. Diane waved his hands in dismissal, pretending to be a magnanimous person. Forget it, forget it. You had no way of knowing I was such a lucky individual. I can allow it to slide this time. Iacus' expression darkened, what right do you have to marry Madeline? You're nothing but trash. Diane hunched over, laughing hard and wiping tears from his eyes. I've never heard of anyone more pathetic than you. Here, here, I feel bad. So, I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself. Iacus who was about to attack in frustration and anguish paused. You said I couldn't climb to the top myself right, so how about we have a little bet? Iacus took deep breaths trying to calm himself. He had pined for Madeline every day, and she suddenly appeared with another man claiming to be her fiancé. How could he accept this? But, Diane was giving him an opportunity to embarrass him, so he had to take it. How could a boy with no cultivation reach the top floor? Iacus smirked. If you can't reach the top floor, you can never see Madeline again. 
If you reach the top floor, you can eat and drink for free at every heaven's wine on the continent. Madeline had burning anger on her face. She couldn't believe this was a person she had once considered a friend. That's ridiculous. You're equating me being with the best woman in existence to your shitty establishment. If I win, you'll castrate yourself and get out of my sight. Absolutely not. Diane seemed unperturbed by Ayaka's response, you disgust me. To actually think that I would bet with the happiness of my woman. Do you think her feelings are something you can toy with? Suddenly the expression of the three young people changed as they felt a suffocating pressure engulf them. A devilish killing intent caused them to sweat profusely. What's going to happen is that I'll reach the top. Then you'll give me whatever I need to never have to spend a dime here for the rest of my life. And just to make you feel even worse about when I do it, I'll let you know that had I lost, I would have given you a peak grandmaster level weapon. Madeline was smiling brightly. It seemed she would never have any grievances as long as she was with Diane. I edited the chapter reward system. Apparently it's been too long since my last math class, the previous system wasn't worth it at all, LMAO. Edit below. Chapter 85 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Iacus couldn't control himself as he nodded his head. But, an overwhelming sense of jealousy flooded him as he watched Madeline grab Diane's arm as he walked towards the entrance. Whispers began to flood Iacus' ears as they walked in. Isn't that the young master? Why is he so pale? Wow, who is that beautiful lady? Why is she with that guy? They must be a couple. Oh look, they're walking to the elevator that goes directly to the tenth floor, it seems like they might want to go to the second level. But, they have no cultivation, plus, how could they afford it? Maybe they're friends of the young master. Maybe. Iacus clenched his fists. Don't worry young master Vinum, he'll embarrass himself really soon. Without the protection badge your master gave you, how could a kid with no cultivation climb the tower, the Windblade Sect disciple was clenching his teeth as he watched Madeline smile and laugh with Diane. Soon, they reached the entrance to the eleventh floor. There were no guards, there was simply stairs. But, Diane's eyes gleamed with gold as though he could see everything. Leaning down, he spoke to Madeline. With your hairpiece, this array formation will be nothing to you. It will protect you even to the top floor, Diane said with a smile. Although defensive treasures were powered by a user's cultivation, something like the passive pressure of an essence gathering experts was nothing for a transcendent treasure. That being said, the outcome would be very different if it was an essence gathering expert who actively attacked. Diane and Madeline began to slowly walk towards the stairs. Lady Sapientia. Wait. Iacus called out. Oh. Weren't you calling me Madeline earlier on? What changed? Iacus' face froze, but he grit his teeth and continued, Let this fool die alone, I can't stand to see you hurt yourself like this for an ant. Madeline's face iced over, Keep insulting my fiancé and I'll cut all relations to you. I trust him far more than I trust you. Iacus felt his heart tearing apart. He wanted to step forward and grab her to stop this foolishness, but a sharp sword chi made him freeze. You can talk about me all you want. You can even attack me if you want. But, don't think of touching my woman. Stay in your place. Not bothering to look back, Diane took Madeline's hand and walked forward. His eyes were shining gold and his body began emitting faint mists of aurora flames. As for Madeline, a soft sheen of light fluttered around her, deflecting the pressure entirely. Young master, that... That defensive treasure, it can do the same thing your badge can do. Ayaka stared at Madeline, wide-eyed. The badge his master gave him was no joke, but even it wouldn't deflect the pressure so easily. But, what was going on with Diane shook him even more. His face twitched. I tried to use a pressure formation against an array alchemist. My master would scold me to no end. The young girl and man looked over at Iacus with odd expressions. 
Array alchemist. And so young. I thought they were already nearly extinct, muttered the beautiful girl. Not just that, he has an innate aurora, this task is all too easy for him, Iacchus said through gritted teeth. How could that be possible, but wait, even if he was an array alchemist, how could he deal with an array strong enough to hold a peak level essence gathering expert back? You still won't lose young master. You all may know nothing about formations, but I do. I am a part of a formations guild in a city not far from here. Although many in the guild look down on array alchemy as outdated, my master has always called those men and women bitter fools who couldn't awaken their own auroras to a powerful enough extent to reach any measure of success in array alchemy. Without a powerful aurora, your ability to learn and do is severely diminished. So, how could you then focus on what seems like two entirely separate and complex professions at once? The comprehension abilities of those with auroras with higher percentages of awakening and even more so for those with innate auroras is off the charts, Iacchus fists clenched. The truth is that these formations are low level. The only reason they can hold essence gathering experts back at the top floors is because of a cheat my master used. Because his formation mastery wasn't high at the time he made the restaurant, he decided to substitute the complexity of the formation with raw cultivation instead. But, that also means these relatively simple formations mean nothing to array alchemists. He must have noticed this outside, which is why he was so confident, the Windblade sect disciples finally came to an understanding. If it was a true high-level formation, it could be possible that Dian wouldn't have high enough attainments to manipulate it and divert the pressure from himself. But, since a trick was used, manipulating the energy used to make the formation was as easy as breathing for him. Iacchus grit his teeth, we'll have to be respectful to him from now on. If my master found out I almost killed a true array alchemist, he would disown me, he felt as though he was swallowing a mouthful of needles saying these words. But, it was the truth. He was among the worst of his master's disciples to begin with and was lucky to have been accepted, he couldn't afford to be seen in a poor light. Duck, but, don't worry. With his arrogance, he will definitely clash with anyone who offends Madeline. And considering who the guests are on the top floor, and how beautiful Madeline is, how could there not be conflicts? An evil smile appeared on Iacchus' face. The Windblade disciple suddenly understood and smirk, you can have your fun for now, but, those God Clan disciples aren't as easy to deal with as us. The beautiful girl remained silent as they all made their way to the top. Chapter 86 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Under the astonished gazes of the customers of the restaurant, Diane and Madeline reached the last step to the 40th level. Only massive oak doors lay before them. Dot Diane looked back towards Iacchus, saying nothing. Dealing with characters like this meant nothing to him. Trampling on weaklings wasn't something he cared much for, but he wasn't going to allow himself to be disrespected. Diane was beginning to think little of this so-called martial world. The only grudges he had left were red and blue, but they were fleeting memories in his mind. How could third foundation layer fighters be on Diane's radar? I'm excited to see exactly how powerful those big sect seated geniuses are, whistle. A badge hurtled towards Diane, causing him to smirk, still trying to test me at this point. Diane flicked his finger. A ray of celestial will penetrate it through to the badge, immediately purifying the energy and will Iacchus had infused in it. Diane leisurely caught the badge, turning away from Iacchus without a word. Iacchus could only clench his fists, you dare disregard me. Diane was quite surprised with the badge though. From what he could tell, it was the symbol of an esteemed elder as the ancient character on it should represent a family name. But, that wasn't all. The badge was actually a half-step grandmaster treasure. A small smile appeared on Diane's face, at least he lives up to his bets. Hand in hand, Madeline and Diane opened the doors to the top floor. Whether it was due to their youth or Madeline's beauty, both were attention grabbers. It wasn't the norm for such youth people to reach this floor. 
At the far end of the room, a group of three young men and a two women sat with lofty expressions on their faces as though they couldn't be bothered to even be there. Big Brother Ragnor, did we really have to come here just for some ridiculous rumor? This back. Water place is going to be the end of me. A feminine looking young man was pouting as though he was a child. The man he was speaking to was lean and delicate, blonde hair gently falling to his shoulders. He opened his blue eyes after savoring the glass of wine in his hands. The loss of our branch family is a stain on the Ragnar God clan's prestige. As family members and auxiliary clans under the main clan's umbrella, it's only right that we were sent to do this. Plus, if the Pakel family were to act on this rumor, and it happened to be true, wouldn't that mean that we had warred with them and gained nothing? At least in this situation they don't have access to their technique either. Otherwise, this would have all been for naught. The feminine-looking young man didn't seem convinced, I still don't know why we warred for a technique like that, it makes no sense. If it was really that powerful, wouldn't the Pakel clan have suppressed us all? Brother Seeklum, I know your family lost many members in order to foretell and guide the battle, but you do well to remember what questioning the Ragnar main branch means. I won't pursue this because we've been friends for many years, but if you don't want to end up like them, watch your mouth. The Ragnar family youngster had pointed to two young men standing respectfully behind him. They each had scars running diagonally across their faces. If Dian had paid much attention to them, he would have found them to be eerily similar to the scars Red and Blue had, and if he looked even closer, with his perception, he would have realized that each scar was deliberate, as though it were a branding. The feminine-looking young man nodded his head, falling silent. He was bitter and had been for many years. His Seeklum clan was already so small, but as such, they had no choice but to be under the umbrella of a god clan. Because their skills were so highly regarded, they were viewed more like treasures than humans. In fact, their family had a special constitution that was exclusive to their bloodline, making their powerful members a true rarity. Cheer up Brother Seeklum, coming here might not be all bad even if the rumor is false, spoke a young lady whose eyes shone like rubies through her brunette hair. She might have been extremely alluring if it wasn't for her oddly large and hooked nose. Why is that Sister Ipsum? Seeklum asked with a clear, undisguised disdain in his voice. While you were busy sulking, the rest of us were paying attention to our surroundings. The big sects are having their world opening soon, we might as well crash it. How are they going to say no to us? In fact, they'll probably beg us to participate, snickered the young lady with red eyes. A radiantly beautiful girl with white hair and eyes sat silently, watching the scene. It's odd that a member of a family of hippy-dippy fortune-tellers needs to be told things like this, laughed the red-eyed girl. Seeklum's eyes narrowed. Didn't I tell you to stop coming after my family? You think I want to hear this nonsense from a girl who comes from a family of hook-nosed witches? A cold gleam flashed by the girl's eyes, but it was quickly settled you're well aware that this is as a consequence of the technique we practice. At least my family doesn't die when we perform our ultimate technique. Seeklum's eyes iced over as he stared daggers at the girl in front of him. The rest of the group looked at each other somewhat bitterly. How many times had they already heard this exact argument? They should just get a room already. Whoa, let's calm down, a dark-haired black-eyed young man with a fierce appearance was about to try and mediate the situation when he froze. Chapter 87 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The fighting duo looked at him in confusion, young Master Cavacitas. Are you okay? The god clan youths seemed to always call each other by their last names as though to constantly remind those around them of their status. After a few moments of not answering, Cavacitas finally snapped out of his stupor, Brother Ragnor, you're not going to fight me over this one, right? You already have Sister Nivius. At the end of the room, Cavacitas found something he didn't want to take his eyes off of. The white dot haired girl's eyebrow raised slightly, wince when did he have me? Ragnar's eyes had landed on the same thing Cavacitas had. I've been courting Lady Nivius for so long, yet she's shown no interest. 
I've already decided that she'd be my first wife, but never did I think I'd meet a girl more beautiful than her. Listen Cavasitas, we're both God clan members who've earned places in our main clan's branch, shouldn't you want to foster a relationship with me by allowing me this one? Nivius didn't know whether to laugh or cry, if you want to go after women, go ahead, but leave me alone. Diane and Madeline were oblivious to their impact as they walked to an empty table. So, Milady Madeline, do tell me what the best delicacies here are, Diane said with a smile. I've never tried things on this floor either, said Madeline with a wry smile. Hmm, well, since the wine boy was so generous, let's try one of everything, shall we? Madeline was about to explain how the ordering in Marshall restaurants worked, but she noticed that Diane had already noticed that there was a formation mechanism on the table. His eyes shone a golden light as he slowly figured it out. Madeline put her hands on her chin as she watched Diane with a smile on her face from the other side of the table. You could just ask me you know, she thought while giggling. About ten seconds later, Diane seemed to have figured something out. Taking out the badge Iacus had given them, he placed it on the table and an array in the form of a menu appeared. Diane grinned as he happily ordered one of everything. Iacus gritted his teeth as he watched this scene, those are expensive you country bumpkin. His heart bled. This was the top floor, the delicacies available here were incomparable to the other levels. If Diane really ordered one of everything, he was doing the equivalent of squandering millions of profound stones. But, Iacus could only keep his anger to himself as he respectfully walked to the table filled with God clan members. Bowing deeply, he spoke, it's an honor to have three God clans gather in our humble restaurant. Iacus looked up to find he was being ignored as a heated battle of words raged. Don't be ridiculous Ragnar. We were supposed to be tempering ourselves for the world tournament and you instead dragged me and Sister Nivius to this shitty place. This is the least you owe me. It isn't my fault. And you didn't have to come with me. Bullshit. We've been friends for years, was I just supposed to leave? Nivius shook her head watching this scene. They were arguing like the girl would definitely choose one of them. But if you looked for even a split second, she was clearly already in love. She started regretting following Ragnar, but she really couldn't deal with his constant pleading. Fuck it. We'll let her decide, Ragnar waved over to one of the scar-faced slaves, go over and get her to come here. Give the kid with her a million profound stones to fuck off. Make sure to let her know that we're representing god clans. Iacus and the Wind Blade sect disciples could only stand awkwardly. Over at Diane and Madeline's table, they were looking at a table filled with spiritual foods and wines. Diane laughed, if we ate all of this here, our bodies would explode from all the energy. Humph, who asked you to be such a glutton, Madeline said jokingly. What's life without some food, Diane said with a grin. He was about to pick up some sliced fruit to try, when he heard food steps approaching their table. Diane frowned but ignored it, content to watch Madeline take little nibbles of her food. Bang! Sparkle asterisk a massive pile of profound stones wafted a pure energy into the large top floor. Such a commotion couldn't possibly be missed by the individuals of this floor, even though each and every one of them was a member of high society. So many profound stones, what's going on? Diane looked over with a raised eyebrow and his eyes flashed with something inconspicuous as he noticed the scar on the servant's face. The young masters have given you a million profound stones to fuck off. You can go now. Not waiting to see how Diane would respond, the scar-faced servant looked to Madeline. Young Master Alof Ragnar of the Ragnar God Clan main branch and Young Master Ace Cavasitas of the Cavasitas God Clan would like to invite you join their table. They hope that you won't reject. Madeline's face darkened, but she heard a voice that lightened her mood considerably. Madeline, you have to try this. It tastes exactly like mangoes from the human world, but it gives you the same pure feeling as being washed over with celestial will. Madeline looked over at Diane to find him smiling at her. 
she could only shake her head and laugh when she noticed that the million profound stones were gone. The servant's face darkened and his scar seemed to throb as blood coursed to his face, do you have any idea who you're offending? Diane turned to the servant, go bark somewhere else. The servant was sent flying like a kite, blood spurting from his mouth. He couldn't even grasp what was happening even so long after he crashed into the ground. Chapter 88 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The servant slowly stood with an aggrieved look on his face. He wasn't weak by any stretch. If he was, he would have never been chosen as a servant for the second young master of the Ragnar clan. Yet, he was still sent flying in such a casual fashion. When the younger generation of the God clan saw this scene, their faces couldn't help but twist with displeasure. Killing intent rose in the air as the crowd whispered. Who is that kid? The murmurs of the spectators remained hush. They had already been walking on pins and needles ever since they realized the identity Alaf and Ace stood, the anger clear on their faces. They didn't care for the servant or the money. But, the slap to their faces it entailed couldn't be tolerated. Diane didn't seem to notice their rage as he continued to merrily eat along with Madeline. Bang! The table cracked under the pressure being exerted by the two boys. But, Diane seemed undisturbed as he immediately used an array to catch the food and wine before they fell. The anger on the faces of the young masters multiplied. They had purposefully exerted pressure on Diane's side of the table to make the food fall on him while leaving Madeline unscathed, but it hadn't seemed to work. Madeline's face flushed with displeasure. She just wanted a nice day with Diane, and it had been for the most part, until they started running into person after person who thought they could buy her love. I'm Madeline Sapientia, the current first in line genius of the Sapientia God clan. If you don't leave us alone, don't blame me for being impolite, the aura of her goddess disposition exploded forward, flooding the room with incomparably blind light. The crowd erupted. Since when did this small place become a den for God clan members? And a first in line genius no less. Ilaf and Ace froze, their faces paling. Although they were God clan members, their statuses couldn't compare to a first in line genius. This was the person most likely to inherit the leadership of a clan. They had gotten information that the Sapientia clan had changed their first-in-line genius a few days ago because one of their members awakened 100% of their god-level constitution. But, how could they have possibly expected such a coincidence? Diane was surprised too. He hadn't known that the Sapientia clan would work so fast. It seemed that Madeline's master worked fast and somehow also got Madeline a message without him realizing. Diane's eyes narrowed, such a realization leaving him feeling uncomfortable. That woman sure is powerful. The pale-faced young masters were about to apologize when Alof thought of something. So, it's Lady Sapientia. Please excuse our offense. I hope you'll forgive us on account of your being betrothed to my elder brother. I only wanted to check on you and see why you'd be alone with another man if you know this, Alof said slyly. Wait, Nivius recognized this girl, she's, that's Madeline. She seems, cured. She's the one who awakened 100% of her constitution. The sect would be very interested in how she did that, Diane sighed, didn't I already go through this once before? What is this idiot saying? The marriage was broken off after you thought Madeline was sick, and now you want to turn it back on. Really? Madeline's anger peaked, how dare you say that to me? Ilof seemed unaffected. Although his body was being suppressed due to the difference in quality of their constitutions, Madeline was still too weak. I only say this for your sake sister. In law, if you made this a habit, what would people think of you? What of the Sapientia clan? It's a good thing I only have one fiancé and he's right here, Madeline said angrily. Ilof stumbled, B. Dot, but, but what? I never wanted to marry into the Ragnar family and they did nothing to help when I was sick. Why would you think that this marriage alliance is still a possibility? Do you have a screw loose? Diane smiled, she looks quite cute when she's angry. 
Ilov bowed, I apologize young mistress Sapientia. We were wrong. May I have the honor of knowing the identity of you esteemed husband to be? Diane's voice sounded faintly, you don't need to tiptoe around the subject, I'm not from a god clan. I'm the humble successor of the Celestial Deer sect, Diane Sekero. Ilov looked over at Diane in shock, but his face went back to one of neutrality. Ace grinned fiercely, the successor of a dead sect. You must be quite strong then, right? How about we spar for a bit, he said, cracking his knuckles letting a deadly chaos aura. Destruction will, huh? Not interested, I'm trying to have a nice and calm evening with my woman, Diane's sharp eyes bore into them, so how about you two fuck off? With a wave of his hand, a concealment formation surrounded him and Madeline, sealing off Ace and Alaf who were grinding their teeth in anger. Soon a voice entered their ears that made them nearly pass out in anger, oh, and I'll be keeping your profound stones. Consider it as a penalty for disturbing us. You. Ace was about to charge at the formation when he felt a hand stop him. Electric sparks went off in Alaf's eyes as he tried to calm himself. We'll find another opportunity to kill him. What right does the successor of a bullshit dead clan have to have such a woman? The first in line genius of a god clan. Diane Sekero. I'll remember it for now. Then erase it from my memory when I've killed you. Elof knew that he couldn't offend Madeline any more than he already had. And, he knew fully well that the Ragnar clan also had no right to force a first in line genius to marry anyone. Years ago, it was because Madeline was a genius, but not the best the Sapientia God clan had, that the Ragnar clan was able to use her as a chess piece to form an alliance. As for why the Ragnar clan was making so many power moves, Elof had no idea. But he knew that his interests always aligned with his clan. The alliance had fallen through because of Madeline's illness and the Sapientia clan had no other females with god-level constitutions that would have been worthy of the Ragnar clan. But now, it was different. She had been cured. As long as Diane died, Elof's elder brother could win her heart the conventional way even if she could no longer be forced. My brother is among the best geniuses the continent, even ranked top ten. If he isn't worthy of you, who is? Elof gave the array one more glance before waving his entourage over to leave. Chapter 89 You are listening at NovelFull.audio In a few days, we'll enter the legacy world the big sex will open. Usually, this wouldn't be worth our time, but, it took 500 years of power to open this one, it may be more powerful than the previous ones. Possibly comparable to worlds we open as god clans. No point in letting those small dot time sects have something so good, so let's take it, smirked Alof. Then, we'll find this Diane Sacharo and kill him without Madeline finding out, Ace replied. Nivius shook her head in contempt for her supposed friends, Madeline is my friend and I have no intention of allowing you all to kill her love. Her delicate voice called out for the first time that evening. B, I'm not moving off of this point. If I see you use any underhanded means against him, the first person who will know is Madeline. And I'm sure you know how powerful her master was all those years ago. She almost fought the entirety of the Sapientia clan just in anger for how they treated Madeline. How do you think she'll react if you kill her treasured student's love? Do you think your god clans really care about your lives and deaths enough to offend such an existence? Ace and Elof gritted their teeth, nodding. They couldn't afford to offend Nivius just as much as they couldn't afford to offend Madeline. Although Nivius wasn't the first in line genius of the woman only Nivius god sect, due to the small size of the sect, they treasured each of their members very highly. Finding women with god level constitutions wasn't easy, yet the Nivius sect was made up solely of them. As long as you were willing to discard your family name and take the name Nivius, you were protected to the fullest extent. However, the clan was very strict. Marriage into other sects and clans wasn't allowed. In fact, even purity had to be maintained at all times. 
Although Nivius never intended to give Alof a chance, all God Clan young masters think they'll somehow be the exception to this rule. The reason Madeline hadn't joined was because she was already a part of the Sapientia family, so it would be considered defecting to join. Which would, of course, put a major black stain on her family. That said, even the Nivius sect wouldn't have been able to cure Madeline. Without unlocking the goddess constitution to 100%, problems would have continued to rise. And that was simply beyond the capabilities of any god clan in this age. Inside the concealment formation, Madeline and Diane continued to enjoy their meal. Diane chuckled, you're worth so much trouble you know. Madeline harumphed, since you wanted to make such a beautiful lady fall for you, you'll just have to deal with it because you're stuck with me now, humph. Diane smiled and suddenly leaped over the table which caused Madeline to nearly cry out in shock. Dot still, she settled into Diane's arms as she felt an arm around her waist. Diane grinned, I'll never get tired of making sure as many horny and arrogant young masters know that you're mine. Madeline smiled, kissing Diane softly. The two had a peaceful rest of the night. A long while later, they began to fly back to Focus Academy, the soothing sound of Diane's singing voice resonating through the night sky. Madeline looked at Diane as they sat atop the celestial deer. Musical will, with your voice. Is that possible? Diane smiled holding Madeline in his arms, his voice continuing without pause. Madeline trembled. The emotion in Diane's voice, it felt so clear. This is actually a song from the human world. He obviously has no cultivation, but he can still make people feel indescribable pain and love to the point of tears. Why? Because the best instrument you have access to is your body. Nothing connects with what you want to convey more than your voice. You've been communicating with it since you were born. Whether they were gurgles or cries and now that you can use it to its fullest extent, think about how much it would amplify your will of music. Cultivation will always cap you at the ninth level of a will, but, I've come to understand that when you can find the root of a will, its most perfect form, you can make that will emit power comparable to an intent. Madeline sat in a state of thought for a while, partly to wait for the tears in her eyes to stop from the song and partly because it seemed that whenever she spoke about cultivation with Diane, she would reach a new level of enlightenment. How'd you figure that out? I must have read hundreds to thousands of books on cultivation by now. Some of them mentioned a state of understanding of wills and intents that surpass a surface understanding. I didn't understand what it meant initially, but, the human world appreciates vocal music to a much higher extent than the martial world does, so while I was trying it out one day, my musical will evolved. So, I came to understand that a state of oneness with your will can come once you've understood the essence of what the will was created for and what media maximizes it. Madeline smiled, my master would bow down to you if you explained this to her, no matter how you try to play it off as simple. Diane laughed, if I wasn't at least this amazing, would I be worthy of you? Madeline giggled, at least you understand. Madeline had fallen asleep while leaning on Diane. The trip back was a long one, so Diane was looking up at the sky in thought. I have so many cultivation techniques I can choose from, but I can't seem to decide on just one, the truth was the cultivation was entirely too complex for most people. Much like arrays and alchemy, there comes a point when you realize that everything in cultivation is connected. However, when you come to realize this, it only increases your confusion. Almost as if being ignorant to that fact would make everything easier on you. Too many choices was the bane of decision making. Chapter 90 You are listening at NovelFull.audio When Diane was reading on body cultivation and energy cultivation, he was hard.pressed to understand the difference between them. This was because energy cultivation begins with body refinement, and the body must get stronger in order to accommodate higher level energies as your cultivation improves. But, if you need to improve your body to cultivate energy, then where is the line of difference between body and energy cultivation? It just seemed as though everything was connected to the point where understanding was impossible. And if that didn't make matters bad enough, you also had to include soul cultivation in the mix, 
while also taking into account that you need a stronger body to accommodate a stronger soul. However, after reading so many books, Diane had begun to piece together what was actually going on. Energy and soul cultivation use the body as a container, diverting energy from themselves to strengthen the body. What this unfortunately results in is a relatively weakened state of the resultant soul or energy cultivation. Dian had come to this understanding when his master fused the two drops of essence blood with him. Although he was nowhere near accumulating 100%, his body's power had improved significantly. This led to his soul power increasing along with it. Which meant his soul had finally stopped diverting its power. Originally, Dian had assumed this increase in soul strength was due to a tempering of his will. For example, after his near death at the hands of Darius, his soul strength had increased, so Dian couldn't help but link the two. However, that was a symptom and not the cause. The truth was that Dian's innate soul strength had already far surpassed any normal humans who had not soul cultivated, because of his innate aurora. However, that soul strength was boxed in and unable to fully manifest itself. Feeling its life in peril, the soul had no choice but to give up some of its energy to power Dian's body so that it could expand. When Dian had powered up his body via external means, his soul was finally able to take back what it had spent and manifest its peak middle blossoming level. This may not seem like much, but it's near impossible to find someone with an innate soul strength of the first stage as the innate level of most wouldn't be comparable to a low dot level foundation stage fighter. In fact, only clans that specialize in soul type techniques such as the Ragnar Auxiliary Clan, Seeklum, would have a small percentage of geniuses who reached this level before even cultivating. The fact Dian had an innate soul strength at this level, which would be comparable to a mid level meridian formation expert, was unprecedented in the history of the martial world. But, now that Dian's innate soul strength had manifested to its full abilities, Dian would need a soul cultivation technique to improve it. Before, he had assumed it would just continue strengthening, but he then found out that for it to strengthen any more without consciously cultivating it, he would have to first reach that level in energy cultivation before his soul improved any more. Dian obviously didn't like the idea of slowing his cultivation down like that because there was no benefit to it unlike with energy cultivation. For soul cultivation, Dian wasn't too worried. What technique could be better than an ancient god sex that specialized in the soul due to their mastery in array alchemy? In addition, unlike energy and body cultivation, soul cultivating only had a single method. Masochism. Soul cultivating required heart-rending pain. To improve, the soul needed to be constantly torn apart and mended. They were only separated by the levels of pain you were willing to endure. Common earth, heaven and divine. In a sick twist of fate, the best technique also required the most pain. The reason being that only the best techniques can completely tear the soul into its most minute bits which would result in not only a purer, but also a tougher and stronger soul. Dian, not wanting to do anything by half measures, had chosen the divine soul cultivating technique. Celestial Deer's Rend the issue, though, wasn't his soul cultivation, it was separating his body in energy cultivating. Energy cultivation techniques were as plentiful as the stars in the sky, but the issue was that there were so many paths to take, and yet, none of those paths seemed perfect, even among the cultivation techniques of the ancient god clan. Eddie E.T. As for body cultivation, the celestial deer sect had only a few, and they were all subpar. None were above the earth level which made Dian feel a bit bitter, but he had to accept it. Not only were those who understood the deviations between energy and body rare, the ones willing to deviate time into forming good techniques for the body were even fewer. There was nothing Dian could do about energy cultivation for now. He still had time before his 18th birthday, so he planned on finding as many energy cultivation techniques as he could, and maybe one would be perfect for him. Although he hadn't found the perfect technique for him, he had found a technique perfectly tailored to Madeline's goddess disposition. It wasn't a surprise that a celestial clan would have a technique perfect for the purity of Madeline's constitution. It was called Celestial Goddess Will. 
It was also part of the reason Diane wanted Madeline to personally understand celestial will, because the technique required the meridians and body to be tempered with celestial will. With Madeline's compatibility with it, it was without a doubt a peak-level divine technique. By adding a few divine-level martial techniques to the mix, Diane would be confident in leaving Madeline so she could grow on her own while he explored the world. He would miss her, but he knew that this would benefit them both greatly. Madeline would affirm her place in the Sapientia God clan and Diane would make the Celestial Deer clan's name ring through the continent.